हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू एम्स क्वेश्चन डिस्कशन सीरीज नंबर नाइन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑल आर हर्ड इन कॉनिक एम एस एक्सेप्ट द आंसर इज थर्ड हर्ड साउंड नाउ लेट सी वट फाइंडिंग वी गेट इन एम एस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी गेट लाउड एस वन ओके बट रिमेंबर in the advanced stages when the valve is calcified okay then this may become soft so soft s1 occurring in pure ms indicate calcified aortic uh, calcified mitral valve other finding what we get again is is opening snap what is opening snap normally when any valve open it produces no sound but sometime uh, in the advanced stage of mitral stenosis the mitral valve open with a great noise and this is known as opening snap and we also get a mid diastolic murmur okay and uh, it is uh, accentuated just before the just at time of diastole it is accentuated this is the classical finding now how do you know the severity of ms closer the opening snap to a2 a2 means aortic component of the second sound and number 2 longer the murmur more is the severe ms now third sound is never heard in ms there are two condition where third sound is never heard one is mitral stenosis and other is cardiac tamponade now in which condition third sound is heard third sound can be heard normally in certain physiological condition it can be heard normally in children pregnancy athletes pathological third sound is heard in hypertension chf aortic stenosis aortic recurrent coronary artery disease hocm remember third sound is heard in early diastole and it is also known as filling sound in contrast to s4 which is heard in late diastole and that is known as atrial sound third sound is produced in the rap rapid filling phase of myocardium and s4 is produced due to atrial contraction that's why s4 is also known as atrial kick or atrial sound question number 2 a patient has dyspnea syncovangina most likely diagnosis is aortic stenosis well in aortic stenosis the three classical symptom are angina syncope and dyspnea but in ar we get main symptom is palpitation now what are the clinical finding in a case of aortic stenosis first of all in this case heaving sustained heave apex beat sustain heave apex beat is there in as then we have got ejection click we have a ejection systolic murmur and this may radiate to carotid thrill is there okay and the classical finding in these patient pulse pressure is reduced and in some cases you get gela verden sign let us see what are the other important sign that we see in 
rheumatic heart disease or other cardiac condition. Gala body sign in AS, Caravello sign. in TR, Ewart sign in cardiac tamponade, broadband sign in constrictive pericarditis. Okay. Now, few extra point, AS can lead to sudden cardiac what are the other cardiac condition which can lead to sudden cardiac death? Coronary artery disease or MI, HOCM, mitral valve prolapse and of course, aortic stenosis. These are the few condition which can lead to sudden cardiac death. Question number 3, which of the following is usually not seen? Answer is pulmonary stenosis. This is the least common among all the valvular heart disease. Okay. Now, as far as the all are stenotic conditions, but pulmonary valve is the least common involved. Most common valve involved is mitral valve. And the most common murmur seen is mitral regurgitation. Remember MR and AR and AS, these three can occur as congenital also, but MS is very rare to be congenital. One more point, MR, AR, AS, they can occur in many other conditions also like MR, AR, they can occur in Marfan syndrome, they can occur in MVP, okay. they can occur in degenerative disorder also. But remember, MS is seen only in rheumatic heart disease. It means presence of MS is a diagnostic and one more thing, MS is very rarely seen, rather practically is never seen in pediatric age group. It is seen only in adults, very rarely it can be seen in below 18 years, then we call it to be juvenile mitral stenosis. Question number 4, a patient with anti-phospholipid antibody syndrome and recurrent abortion are there, then what to do, what treatment we give, we, for, for we give aspirin and low molecular weight heparin. First of all, we use low dose aspirin that is 75 milligram what we use for coronary artery disease also and this is known as low dose aspirin is also known as St. Joseph aspirin. Okay. To prevent this recurrent abortion, we combine aspirin with low molecular weight heparin. First of all, we should know why it is happening because in these patients, we have a anti cardio lipin antibodies. Due to these antibodies, patients are prone to more and more platelet aggregation and clot formation. What is special thing about this clot formation? This clot occur in both artery and vein. Okay. Now, let us see what are the causes of other causes where we have clot formation in both artery and vein. The other causes are polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytosis, PNH, nephrotic syndrome, protein C and protein S deficiency, anti-thrombin 3 deficiency. Okay. So, all these are cause of increased clot in both artery and vein and of course, apply is one of the things. 
and to diagnose uh, these antibodies we use dilute Russell Viper antibody tests. In, in this patient PTT is also prolonged, but PT is normal and due to same antibody patient may have false positive VD RL test. This is about APLA. Question number 5, Lennox Gestalt syndrome the treatment is rufinamide. Okay. Let us talk about certain newer drugs, other newer drugs for epilepsy. The other newer drugs are steripentol, Then rufinamide is for Lennox Gestalt syndrome. Lamotrigine it is a new drug, it has got a very wide range of action. In fact, uh, there are two drugs which have got widest range of anti epileptic action. One is lamotrigine, other is valproate. Okay. In fact, lamotrigine, if you see the table of Harrison, where the, he has given the drug of choice for anti epileptic drug, lamotrigine is considered as first line treatment in all types of epilepsy. But it is a good drug, but the only big side effect is it can lead to severe extensive exfoliative dermatitis. Valproate is the other drug which has got wide range of action. In fact, practically, practically this can be used in all sort of all types of epilepsy. Only in focal epilepsy it is a second line treatment, otherwise valproate is the first line treatment in all other types. Valproate has got side effect, it can lead to weight gain and valproate is not given in very young children below 1 or 2 years. Question number 6, patient has aortic valve disease with hemiparesis which they prevent will give only anti platelet treatment because perhaps a clot has gone and which can has gone into middle cerebral artery region which has blocked the internal capsule causing hemiparesis. So, it has lead to a type of ischemic CVA to prevent we only use antiplatelet. Okay, but if you use anticoagulant it can lead to bleed also. The only thing what we can give is antiplatelet drug is the right answer. Low dose aspirin is the best drug. We can also use dipyranamol. and we can also use clopidogrel. Okay. Remember he is asking preventive drug right? and preventive drug is always given for a long time. Anti low dose heparin is not given as a long term prophylaxis. And one more thing, in coronary artery disease we use aspirin and ticagrelor. The so called concept of dual antiplatelet therapy and extra information about thrombolytic therapy in acute ischemic CVA. With the only thing we use is TPA. Now, the window period has been extended to 4.5 hours. This is the latest update about use of thrombolytic in acute ischemic stroke. Question number 7 We have a 70 year old male, right hemiparesis loss of speech in 2 to 0.5 hour, BP is 110 by 100. Next step is what we have to go, 
is NCCT. First of all is a case of acute stroke 2.5 hours, BP is high, but it is not very, very high. The first thing we like to go for non contrast CT scan. The reason being in any ischemic stroke, any, any, any stroke, the first thing is to differentiate whether it is ischemic stroke or it is hemorrhagic. The thing what we do is non contrast CT scan. Remember in acute ischemic stroke in the first 24 hours CT scan is normal and we also know that 80 percent stroke are due to ischemia. But now you will be asking a question to me you we know very well this will be normal then why we go for CT scan we want to rule out bleeding. Okay, why not MRI? because CT scan can pick up bleeding much better than MRI. So, if CT scan is normal that means we have ruled out there is no bleeding we can very safely plan for treatment for ischemic stroke where we can go thrombolysis as this patient has come within 2.5 hours we can plan for thrombolysis and of course we will give anti plated therapy also. Remember we always use non contrast CT. In fact, wherever blood is there, we never use contrast. Due to same reason, in subacnoid hemorrhage, also we use plain CT scan. Okay, so once we are sure about that patient has antica ischemic stroke, then of course we like to go for aspirin, low molecular weight heparin. We can even plan for thrombolytic uh, therapy also. And BP, of course, we'll control. Uh, as I told you earlier also is not very high, but we will definitely like to reduce BP further also. To answer this best answer this question is uh, option D go for non contrast CT scan. Well friends in addition to the question we have some more information for you to make you a better student for my all undergraduate friend we have a UG test series separate for all prof first prof second prof pre final final and we also give an explanatory answer. For my intern post intern we have a UG test uh, PG test series with explanatory answer and we also give online video discussion. We are the only one which give you this and remember our tests are being made by the expert faculty. We also have a champion live test series where you visit to write a test to computer lab where you have actual field to write about exam. You, we are also launching USMLE step 2 and I all of you, you are request you to see this lecture of acid base. You will really love to see this lecture of course acid base comes in all the exam. We are also conducting a PLAP 2 exam, couple of PLAP 2 teaching in Delhi details are given. We have books for you and last minute revision point which many students want. I do send, but they are all from our books. In the last NEET exam, 143 question came uh, from our LMRP from 300 question. Remember, even a single question done right and wrong can change the result. So, you can see I have many of my lectures I have recorded, full lectures are there in YouTube. You can see and can become uh, much more enrichment in knowledge. And in addition, if you want to get directly connected with me, you can send me your information on my WhatsApp number. Those who have already are attached with me, they need not send. But anyone who want to get newer one, you can get attached to me. You send your name, we are in which year, college, your college, which city, and email. I will be updating you with a lot of new information. And after AIMS, I will be starting doing the JIP, PGI and JIPMA test series also. We have a mini Harrison for my undergraduate friends and medicine essence for the intern and post intern. It contain all latest question and picture based question also. Thank you very much for watching this video. How did you like the video? Do inform me. God bless all of you. Thank you very much once again.